All right, so I've got another project here. Uh, this one is got some physical components. So it's a stoplight mechanism. So as you can see, we're running, we've got our north and south roads turning green. Um, and then after a little bit, they'll go yellow and then back to red. Now it's going to swap to our east and west roads to green. They're going to stay green for a bit and then go yellow and red. Now we've got some additional functionality with some buttons over here. So I can click this crosswalk button at any time. And after the lights go red from whatever they're on currently, they're going to stay red for about 10 seconds. And we got our little crosswalk light here. And that's going to stay on. So letting people know that they can cross safely in any direction they need to. And then once that goes off, we're going to return back into the program where we left off. In this case, we'll be going to the east and west roads. And we've got an emergency button here. And so by clicking that, we can call an emergency, which puts the stoplights into a four-way stop. And then once the emergency, whatever it is, is fixed, we just click that button again and say, return to the normal stoplight loop. And because, you know, the lights sometimes are a little messy because of the Raspberry Pi, I also have this really easy button up here called off, and it just turns them off. So here's a picture I took of the final design. You can see we've got the Raspberry Pi on top. It's hooked up to a portable battery pack. Um, the buttons are to the side of it, and it's got wires running to the different stoplights on our little paper road. And the group and I that I was working with, we were able to add some Finch robots that were remote controlled and drive them and made sure it worked properly. So let's hop over into the coding and see what that looks like. All right, so here's the code for my traffic lights. Um, this one is actually not part of the project I just showed, neither is this one, um, but I wanted to go through them anyway. So basically um, this one just gets a basic traffic light thing and then says, okay, well, transition between the lights, but if the button is pressed, increase the time amount and make the buzzer beep a little bit. Super, super basic. Um, and then I had some extra time on my hands and wanted to annoy my classmates. So I made this really, really awful program where it makes the buzzer buzz, but every time it buzzes, the time that it buzzes for is decreased by one one hundredth of a second. So it slowly gets quicker and quicker at the noise. So it starts out, it's like beep, 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 and it gives like this really anxiety inducing sound. So yeah, a lot of people did not like me after that. Anyway, uh, back on track, I have my final project here, which is quite long. So we're not gonna go through that first. We're actually gonna go through the debug and the off. So the debug is basically this program I would run every time we started a new day working on the project, uh, because I basically wanted to make sure that everything was functioning properly. So it just gets all the variables for all the different lights and buttons, turns them on, testing if each light is working, uh, checks the crosswalk light, then it checks the buttons and just waits for the presses. Finally, I have this off program, which I basically just use to shut down every single light because every time I would test this and shut the program down, it would leave some lights on. So I use this one to just quickly turn everything off. So here's the actual project itself. Um, and I'll run through this a little more in depth so that you guys can kind of understand how it works. So I've got the um, imports here and this sets up all the variables for the lights and buttons. And then here's some variables we'll be using in the code. Um, so I had a, I basically did the whole thing through functions and I first needed a custom sleep function, which I named sleepy because basically what it's doing is it's taking this uh, parameter called wait, which is how many seconds you need to sleep for. And that is actually um, how a normal sleep function works. The only difference is it's going to, instead of sleeping for like, let's say 10 seconds, it's going to sleep for one one hundredth of a second and then check those three buttons. And this was the biggest uh, problem we run into when making this project because we weren't sure how to test buttons while a uh, sleep function was running. And well, you can't. So we decided to make this really, really weird workaround where it would actually just sleep one one hundredth of a second and then check the buttons. So as long as you push the button for a reasonable amount of time, which I feel like no one can click a button in one one hundredth of a second, because that would be very, very, very fast. Um, so as long as you hold the button down for like 150th of a second, it will register as a click. 
Um, and we just use this weight times 100 for how many times to do that. And that actually ended up working really, really well for our project, as you saw. So then what happens is we have this all off function, which turns everything off. We have one that turns everything red. And we have this one called error lights, which what it does is it has these blinking red lights on everything. So if you ever come to a stoplight and seem like the there's an error going on or whatever, they treat it as a four-way stop. So we decided to include that just because we had some extra time and wanted to include some cool functions. And then while it's doing that, it's using that sleepy function again. Well, it's using a built-in version of the sleepy function, not the actual function I showed you earlier. But it's constantly checking if the error button is being pressed, which means that the error is fixed. So uh, we also have the shutdown function, which turns everything off. We have a function for if the walk button was pressed, then we're going to turn everything. Um, we're going to uh, make it so that the crosswalk allows people to cross. We have the Y road, which is um, the one that's north and south. And then we have the X road. And then we have transitioning between the Y road and the X road. And then we have our main loop, which really just says, well, make the Y road green, transition to X, make the X road green, and then transition back to Y. And then this is my initialization, which turns all the lights off and then sleeps for three seconds, which I set to initial pause so that like we just get a second to like get ready. And then there's this main loop, which just runs this over and over and over again. So that's kind of how the code works. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And if you like more projects like this, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel.